Helldivers 2 has done the impossible. Not only have they released a live service game, a successful live service game in 2024 out of all times, but they've also continued to subvert players' expectations while surprising us at every given turn. It blows my mind at this point with how much content they have pumped into this game. It is so rare to have a successful live service game in today's market, but it's even more rare to have a game that is as unique and as memorable of an experience as Helldivers 2 is. So today what I want to do is I want to talk about our journey, our incredible journey through the Galactic War campaign that is Helldivers 2, but even more so, I want to talk about the continued success of the game. I have a feeling the minute that this video goes up, they're just going to post something crazy, something new is going to be added to the game, and it's going to make a bunch of this stuff irrelevant, but whatever. You know, that's just the, what I always have to go through. Thank you, Arrowhead Studios, by the way. I can't wait for vehicles. Speaking of, ad time. Are you ready to take the dive into the most immersive vehicle combat experience of your life? War Thunder isn't just a game, it's a comprehensive journey through military history and it's completely free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Imagine taking command over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from over 10 different major nations. Join 70 million players in a game that boasts one of the most sophisticated vehicle damage models ever created meaning every component from the engine to the crew plays a critical role in your survival. This realism doesn't stop there. With X-Ray View, see the exact impact of your strategies, understanding precisely how and why you've achieved victory or what led to your downfall. Play War Thunder today free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players who haven't seen the skies or the battlefield in six months will receive massive bonus packs across all platforms, including premium vehicles, the new exclusive Eagle of Valor vehicle decoration, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium account time. This offer is available for a limited time, so join now. Thank you, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. And just like clockwork as I was editing this video, High Command executed a major order stating that the automatons have returned, with tens of thousands of warships having started an unprovoked invasion of Cyberstan. Regardless of Arrowhead's blatant attack on my sleep schedule, let's recap the Galactic War up until now. Operation Valiant Enclosure kicked off with a major order against the Terminid threat. Tasked with halting their spread, Helldivers were ordered to cleanse infestations leading to the barrier planets Heath and Angel's Venture to pave the way forward for the Terminid control system. This operation ended in a resounding success, significantly hampering the Terminid advance and ensuring the safety of super citizens. However, the campaign faced setbacks with the Automaton attack, where surprise attacks against populous super Earth planets saw Helldivers struggling to defend homes and citizens, resulting in failure. The defensive drop near Mantis further tested the Helldivers with intercepted automaton plans indicating an aggressive push. Despite valiant efforts, this too ended in failure, marking a challenging period as homes burned and citizens mourned. Though it must be said that some Helldivers refused to give up the fight, marking Malevolon Creek as a bastion of democratic perseverance. Within these difficult times, Helldivers were given little time to rest, with the defense of Angel's Venture and Heath coming up next. Terminated spores had engulfed critical planets, but SEAF reinforcements and Helldiver strategies proved to be potent, ending in a resounding success, halting the Terminated expansion into the Orion Sector. After this came the major order for the liberation of Veld, which was a critical operation aimed at containing the Terminated outbreak. Helldiver's efforts ensured Veld's liberation, allowing SEAF containment teams to secure the planet, leading to yet another success. Soon followed a major turning point for the Galactic War the liberation of Tian Quan. Targeted at securing the new exosuit technology from potential automaton theft, successful liberation safeguarded the arsenal and introduced the Exo-45 Patriot exosuit to the Helldivers arsenal, leading to another success. Equipped with the Patriot exosuits, Helldivers had little issue with the activation of the Terminid control system. Helldivers activated the TCS across all barrier planets, achieving success and marking a significant victory against the Terminid threat while also hearing whispers of a new Terminid type, the Shrieker. While the Helldivers enjoyed their success, new dangers lurked around the corner. The Operation Prime Liberation, aimed at economic expansion by calling the Terminids for their resources, ended in failure due to insufficient penetration into the quarantine zone. This failure led to super-Earth repopulation efforts being halted for some time. Operation Helldraco and subsequent operations like Operation Swift Disassembly were launched to maintain control over strategic planets, 
and eradicate the automaton threat. Despite mixed outcomes in the initial phases with some successes and failures, the final push of Operation Swift Disassembly saw a determined effort to annihilate the automatons entirely. Even with automaton forces adding in factory striders and gunships, the Helldivers proved to be the far greater threat. This series of operations culminated in the full eradication of the automaton threat, marking a monumental success for Super Earth. Following these campaigns, Operation Rearing set the stage for a peaceful future, focusing on the construction of safe and efficient E-710 farms, with the operation status still ongoing. Throughout these operations, the Helldivers have demonstrated unparalleled patriotism and commitment. Each operation, whether a success or failure, illustrated the complex dynamics of interstellar warfare, the importance of strategic foresight, and the unyielding spirit of those who would fight for freedom and democracy in the galaxy. But is the war truly won? What dangers lurk in the depths of space? And who were those automatons attempting to contact outside of the galaxy? Now, I am not saying that the war is over just yet. I'm sure they have plenty of curveballs to throw our way, but looking back and seeing that Helldivers 1's campaigns usually lasted about a month, we're now two months into this one, likely that has something to do with the surprise popularity of the game, but it does seem like this has gone off without a hitch, and it's really impressive to say the least and just looking at all the different community feedback and engagement look at the memes look at the propaganda posters the different videos people have made the different lore that's been generated within the community itself is just absolutely wild malevolon creek and stuff like that it's just so cool and it's just really impressive that's all i have to say looking at all the content that Arrowhead Studios has pumped into the game since the game's released. We have mechs, we have new weapons, new enemies, new stratagems, new missions that we've done, all kinds of different things. And it's just something that we just don't see a whole lot of in a lot of other live service games. Heck, just even regular games today, to be honest with you. And I was cautiously optimistic when it came to the future of Helldivers 2, or at least like the first few months of the game, because the galactic D&D war campaign sounds like a fever dream more than anything. I really didn't think they'd be able to pull it off nor did I foresee them being able to have the kind of content cadence that they've had since the game's release. But they've done it. Helldivers 2 did it. Arrowhead Studios did it. And it really does go to show just how much this game contrasts with so many other live service games in the market. Heck, just other games in general. Now, I've spoken at length in other videos talking about the casual and non-competitive elements of Helldivers 2 and why it's one of the biggest reasons the game has been selling so much and why the game has been so successful and popular. But the community-driven aspects of the game, the camaraderie, the memes, the personalized lore, the creek, the propaganda, all of this stuff is just feeding into the Super Earth machine. While there are tons of non-competitive live service games that are out there, there is a community-driven aspect to this game that I personally have not seen in any other game, nor do I think any other studio will try to attempt to do something on this scale. It's too daring. When you take the time to look at each individual major order, every victory and loss, the Strawman news updates, all the content that's been served to us in the middle of the game, it's shocking to see just how much Arrowhead Studios has stepped up in the middle of a tired live service side of the industry and genuinely did something different, took a huge risk, and it paid off. I want players to keep in mind that the studio's last game saw a fraction of the player base of Helldivers 2. They have had to recalibrate everything they have within the scope of the game's unexpected success. It's like starting a garage band, playing in dive bars, and then waking up the next day and you have to play at Madison Square Garden. And instead of buckling under the pressure, they put their heads down and they made it happen. They drip-fed content to the players at a rate that I don't think any other live service game could replicate. Free content and updates happening almost every week. Whether it was stratagems, new enemies, mechs, and missions, it didn't matter, there was always something new. Following the biggest week of Helldivers 2, Johan Peelstead, the CEO of the company, outright said on Twitter, with the success of Helldivers 2, we are going to start looking for amazing developers that can help us accelerate and beef up our content plans. Jobs are going to be going up soon, but if you're a senior dev, there's always an open application in list today. With the success of the game and the active hiring, this is making me wonder if they delivered whatever they had on deck or just dropped everything they could into the game and planned to increase the content cadence even further into the future. This is such a wild contrast between Helldivers 2 and just about every other live service game that's out there locking themselves to monthly battle passes, giving only just a couple of weapons or a handful of cosmetics that 
most people don't even want. Many live service games very infrequently change their maps or make any large alterations to their games. However, Arrowhead Studios has no issue dropping major changes like mechs, new weapons, and enemies, doing it on a weekly basis rather than locking themselves to a monthly battle pass. Ever since the release of Helldivers 2, every single week I go to log into the game, I have no idea what's gonna happen next. Even when I release a video talking about the game, I go to stream the next day and chat starts telling me of something new that just happened. I start reading an article and they just put something else in there, whether it's the stratagems or new enemies or whatever it is. There's always something new, always some new type of surprise. MMOs can't even deliver on this kind of cadence or this kind of level or this level of service, to be honest with you. Games have just gotten so repetitive and tired. It's the same thing. It's so predictable. We know exactly what they're going to do because they've been doing the exact same thing for years now. They're so afraid of taking risks, but risks are what pay off big. Risks are what made some of the greatest games that we've ever played. Many of the games today that are out that are iterations of risks, that's exactly what they are. If you look at Final Fantasy or you look at Call of Duty or you look at Mario or any of these games, these are all games that started as a risk and then just kept making the same thing over and over again. But... I'll give credit to Final Fantasy and Super Mario Brothers because they've definitely reinvented themselves more than uh, 17,000 times by now, it feels like. But with that said, it's wild, man. And it's just, it's so refreshing to see. At this point, I'm starting to get Warframe vibes. I'm wondering if we're going to log into the game one day and we're going to have space combat. Wait, do we get that? From my perspective, gaming has changed for the worst when it comes to some of the biggest studios in the industry. The success of Helldivers 2 proves that the repetitive nature and the lack of risk-taking that is so prevalent in the industry is starting to work to their detriment. I've sat around wondering what exactly, why exactly Helldivers 2 has continued to be so successful. How can they continue to add content the way that they have when they're only a studio of 100 people with less resources than most of the biggest live service games that are out there? And lately, I've just come to the conclusion that these other companies can't because they genuinely lack the vision and the ability to adapt and think of fresh new content in the same way as Helldivers 2. Games as a service or live service games are designed around cosmetics and monetization, which is fine because that's how these games turn a profit. Nobody thinks that these games shouldn't try to make money. That's what they're in business to do in the first place. The issue is when these games start limiting their own creativity. They are focused wholly on the monetization and not the overall experience of playing a game. Hell, in some cases like Diablo 4, the industry has let it get so bad that it undermines the very reason why players are playing a specific genre in the first place. What's the point of playing a game and earning things in the game if all the coolest things are buyable with real money? That focus on those areas, cosmetics and otherwise, takes away developers and resources from areas that otherwise would improve the overall experience of the game and extend the amount of time that people want to play a game. New content used to mean expansions back in the day, but developers today synonymize new content with new skins, weapon charms, mounts, and nothing that actually impacts gameplay. I'm going to ask you, who do you think these companies believe is worth more? The artists that are working on cool cosmetics or the artists that are actually working on content updates? What do you think the ratio is of developers and artists who are focused on monetizable content versus those who are not? Ever notice how long it takes for things to get fixed in games? However, it takes little to no time for us to be able to see new microtransactions fed into the pipeline? The success of Helldivers 2 and Arrowhead Studios is something that I believe many other studios that are on the highest end of the video game industry cannot replicate at least to a content level, because they lack the ability to do so. They lack the foresight, the flexibility, or moreover, the management that can recognize where true value lies. You have to be built from the ground up to be able to support a game the same way that Helldivers 2 has. And it's just not something that the industry is built for. It's just another tolling of the bell, heralding the end of a generation and the beginning of a new one. Not long ago, Phil Spencer of Xbox came out blaming capitalism for the issues that many of the biggest companies in the video game industry are facing right now, and it genuinely caught me by surprise. I mean, what is he talking about? Over the last few years, we've been fed some incredible games that hit record sales numbers. Then I recognized very quickly that in his interview, he had stated that he doesn't have the luxury of not running a profitable growing business meaning that eyes and mental focus are only on the money and not on the quality of the content or the experiences given to the customer, which right now is the best way for them to make money. Spencer said that they are forecasting a concerning lack of growth in the industry. 
yet we see Pal World get 25 million players. Baldur's Gate 3 and Helldivers 2 sold Spider-Man numbers. Hogwarts Legacy is the first game to outsell Call of Duty in over 15 years. Indie hits like Bellatro and Enshrouded selling millions of copies. Where is this lack of growth he speaks of when new live service games like Helldivers 2 can reach over half a million players between Steam and PlayStation? Players' tastes are evolving. Right now, it's getting outside of the scope of some of these major companies that are out there. And it's just another stamp on the letter that's sent in to these companies, letting them know that times are changing. Players' interests, consumer interests are shifting, and they're wanting something a little bit more original. They're wanting something different, and they're wanting something for the money that they're spending. They want more value out of the games than what they've been getting lately. And say what you will about rising inflation, $70 video games, and how games haven't matched inflation in years, but at the end of the day, I want a $70 game that feels like a $70 game. And lately, I really haven't been getting that out of a lot of these $70 games. Helldivers 2 doesn't feel like a $40 game. It feels far more valuable than that. And players are resonating with that kind of thing because they feel like they're getting way more than they bargained for. And in a lot of cases, they are getting more than they bargained for. And that's awesome. And that's something that we want to see more of. I haven't seen this level of adoration for a game outside of Baldur's Gate 3 and Elden Ring. Players love Helldivers 2 because they love it for the community engagement, but more so because they're getting the money that they paid for. They're getting the content that they paid for. They're getting more than what they paid for. And that's what players want. And you can still monetize your game. They're still monetizing their game. They're doing it justly. They're doing it ethically, more ethically than most at the very least. And that goes to show players value content. Players value the experience, the gameplay, more than anything else, more than all the odds, ends, and bells and whistles that you want to put into a game. And that's not to say that some of these major, huge releases that cost hundreds of millions of dollars shouldn't exist. But at the end of the day, they need to think about, who am I selling this to? Why do they want it? What are they going to get from it? And how do I get them to come back for more? And I don't think that that's been the question that a lot of these companies have been asking themselves. Because if they were, we'd see more games like Helldivers 2. At the end of the day, Helldivers 2 took a risk. They delivered on a game that nobody expected. They didn't even expect the level of success the game got to. And I'm here for it. I can't wait to see what else they put into the game. Who knows what they put into the game at this point. We're almost at the, it looks like we're getting to the end of a galactic war right now, but we still haven't even seen other factions yet. Uh, faction bosses. Or even the vehicles that we've seen teased as well. There's all kinds of content that we know that's still slated for release at one point in time that we've seen hints of, but we haven't seen anything of yet. And I can't wait for it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Thank you guys for watching it. If you guys did enjoy this video, think about subscribing to the channel, liking the video, sharing the video. Follow me on Twitch. I go live multiple days a week. More days coming soon, actually. There's some things I'm working on right now that are going to allow me to be able to maybe stream a little bit more. We'll see. I don't know yet, but uh, yeah. So thank you guys for watching the video. Thank you War Thunder for sponsoring the video. And outside of that, stay cool, stay righteous, stay safe. And most of all, Hell Divers. I'll see you on the next Warfront. That was lame. Major order? No. I'll see you next time. Peace. Family, 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 family. Shout out again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Make sure that you check out War Thunder now for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. And use my link in the pinned comment or in the video description to register. Those of you that are new or haven't played in six months will receive massive bonus packs across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles, in-game currency, and more.